welcome back to my channel learn smart coding in this video i'm going to cover a specific topic provisioning virtual machines using azure portal this is part of az204 developing solutions for microsoft azure if you're looking for the certification there are plenty of videos on the way watch out for my channel let's get into the topic so provisioning virtual machine is part of infrastructure as a service which is in short called as iaas this is one of the service provided by the Microsoft and we can have our own virtual machines built by us and for our need. Before we get into the real time demo, let me explain you at a high level of what is IAS and what is virtual machine and their usage. So what is infrastructure as a service? This is a foundational category of cloud computing service with IAS, which means infrastructure as a service. You are renting the IT infrastructure like servers, virtual machines, storage, network, and operating systems. You can use cloud providers such as Microsoft Azure on a paid as you go service. Like based on your usage, you're gonna pay for Microsoft. So what is so what is virtual machine? A virtual machine commonly shortened to just VM is no different other than the physical computer like your laptop, smartphone, or a server. So it also has a CPU memory disks to store your files and also it can connect to the internet if needed. VMs are often thought of a virtual computers or a software defined computers within the physical servers existing only as a code. Why are we using virtual machines and what are the benefits of using that? So it will help in building deploying apps to the cloud, trying out a new operating system including beta release. You can try all those things in the virtual machine that you create. You can back up your existing OS, spinning up a new environment to make it simpler and quicker developers to run dev test scenarios also accessing virus infected data or running an old application by installing an older OS, running softwares or apps on operating system that they weren't originally intended all these things are clearly mentioned in microsoft website you can go there and refer for more detail you can provision the virtual machine in four ways the first one is azure portal second is Azure CLI. You can also use Azure PowerShell. And the last one is Azure ARM templates. See, in a real-time world, in a company who creates this VM for the users or for their deployment purpose, there are well-defined and considered as a templates, right? So those they use those templates and just put the required parameters of the names and run to create a virtual machine. Okay, we will get into that in uh, upcoming videos, but for now, to make it easy and vi visually see how it is working, we're going to cover a demo on Azure portal. Here I've opened the Azure portal. So open up any of your browser, go to portal.azure.com and log in with your username and password. If you do not have this account, if you're new to this, check out my intro video on how to get started with Azure and a is the 204 certification. Now, after you log in, you will be on this page or dashboard page, right? So we are going to create a virtual machine. So because I have done this before, the virtual machine topic is coming here, okay? However, if you do not have this option here, click on create a resource. On the search box, type virtual machines. So it will pop up couple of suggestions. I'm going to click virtual machine on from the drop down. Okay, so let's click on create. So we are on a page where a couple of sections has been displayed here. So these things we need to fill up to create a virtual machine. Let's narrow down one by one. The first section that you see here, that's called project details. And then the second section is instance details. The third one is the administrator account. And then the next one is the inbound port rule. And there are many other sections like disk, networking, management, advanced tags, and a lot many, right? So in order for us to go with this demo, we will select bare minimum required thing, and then we'll create a virtual machine. Under the project details, I'm going to select the subscription that I have that's called demo account. I have named it as demo account, so that's coming as demo account. For you, it can come 
with whatever name that you have. Resource group is nothing but we're grouping more than one resource together. Once we need to delete all the resources that is that we just created, you can simply go to the resource group and delete that resource group. If you do that, whichever resources under the same resource group will all be deleted. Let us create a new resource group called smart coding demo VM. Okay, it's not there. So I'm going to click on create new and then going to create learn smart coding demo RG. RG means it's a resource group. So if it already exists, it's going to tell us that it do exist. Okay. So let's choose a different one. Let's say okay. So right now this resource group is not created. Once we fill up everything, finally during the deployment stage, it will create the resource group as well. Now we have to name for the virtual machine that we are going to create. So let's name it as demo VM. And this is the region where you have to deploy your virtual machine. So I'm sitting in US East Coast. So I will select the nearest one to me, which is US East available options. So these are the available other options like, you know, you can replicate your VM in case of any issues. So you can choose whatever you want. So let's leave it to default and then the security type. So you have various security type because of this demo i'm going to choose a standard security type and i will leave it up to you for your requirement image image is nothing but a os a operating system so we have plenty of operating systems here right so the virtual machine can have anything that you want it could be a linux it could be a windows it could be anything so here we are going to choose windows server 2006 data center you can click on the see all images and look for every single images that is available in this See, plenty of things up there. Now we are back. Now we need to choose the size. If you click on the size drop down, you have a lot of different sizes available. You can also click on the see all size and choose whatever you want. So here basically this is the power of your virtual machine. So if I choose this, which will have two virtual CPUs and eight gigabyte of memory, which is going to cost me $137 per month. Okay. For your demo purpose, you can choose whatever you want. I'm going to leave it to the same option to give some good power to the virtual machine. Now, this is the next section called administrator account. So in order for you to log in to the virtual machine that you just created, right, we need to have a username password. So let me type username password as so I filled up a password which matches the requirement of the Microsoft. So this is a complex password. Um, so I have a tick mark here. This is good. Now the next section is the inbound port rule. So by default, your VM is not accessible from outside, which means this is a none. So if you want to access your VM outside, you need to select a low selected port and we will go with RDP because it's a Windows machine. So remote desktop basically, which is under the port 3389. So I will select this option. See, this is clearly saying this will allow all IP addresses to access your virtual machine. This is only recommended for testing since we're going to do a demo. This is good for us. And in order for you to minimize this restriction to a particular user or any IP, all the granular level restrictions can be modified in the networking tab. So now I will leave this license part and I'm going to click on review and create. Now this is validating all the information that we filled up in the portal and it is going to show us whether it is valid or not. So now we saw it is validation passed. This VM, the, the size and other things that I've choose, it is going to cost me just $0.1 per hour. Okay, so after the demo, I'm going to delete this. So this is okay for me. So now you can see all the basics information, disk information. So the disk networking, all those tabs that we didn't touch, they're all got their own default values. So I'm going to leave this for now and I'm going to click on create. Okay, after a couple of minutes, the deployment has been completed. Now you can see the details of the deployment here. So let's click on go to resource. It is going to take us to the the virtual machine that we just created. So this is the main page. This is the overview of our virtual machine. So here you can find all the information that you want, like, you know, operating system that whatever you choose to create, it is all here. And this virtual machine's public IP address is 4090 This IP address was given to us because we did request for an RDP access, right? You saw that. All right, so we have all this information, the size, networking, all those things are here. 
Now the next step is to log in to the virtual machine and see how it looks. Now on this resource page, if you click on connect and click on RDP, it is going to take you to a page where you can download the RDP file. So this has all the settings that needs to connect to the virtual machine. I'll click on this. Now, if you are using a Mac system, based on the system that you are using, the RDP file will be downloaded because it's a Windows machine. For me, it has downloaded a Windows later RDP file. So I'll click on this RDP file and it is asking my credential. So I have given the username and password that we created on the, the administrator account. I'm going to give this and say, okay. It is trying to connect. Here you go. It's, if you look at here, you have all this information. Let's open up connecting and it's logging into the virtual machine. Server manager. Okay, so under the server manager, if you go to the tools, right now you don't have IIS installed on this virtual machine. We need to install the web server in order for us to deploy the application onto the virtual machine. Okay. So that's the next step. Now we need to install the web server. So in order to do so, just go and click on the start and type PowerShell. It will open up Windows PowerShell. Open that and you need to execute this command. Install dash Windows feature and the name is web server and include management tools. If you click on this, it will install the web server into the virtual machine that we created. It is right now installing. Okay, after a couple of minutes, the web server has been successfully installed and here is the status. So how do we know this? If you go to this tool, you got this in internet information service, right? This was not displaying earlier. So if you click on this, it is going to open up the IIS and here we go. We have the default site, we have app tools, everything. So you can deploy your application under the default website or you can create your own website, map your IP. You can do so many things. So this is the basics that is required for us to know how to provision a virtual machine. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, like, share and comment. Watch out for my next video for the virtual machine creation using CLI. Thank you.